All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Gear or Gadget. Today we have a new guest, new to the office, first-timer, Lucas's friend, Zach Adams. How's it going? Zach, thanks for joining us today. Do you understand the rules of the show? Uh, I think I got a pretty good handle on them. All right, so if you guys out there don't know the rules, the first rule is we're not here to bash any brands. We're not saying anything is bad. We're just talking our experience. Rule number two, you cannot use the term game changer or you're never welcome back here again rule number three if you like what we got going on like subscribe and we'll get into the episode all right so i'm gonna kick things off i am sticking with the archery theme i've been like on this archery kick for i don't know last several months stemming from all the issues and the experiences i had last year and one of the things that actually we've kind of talked about in the office your arrow builds, my arrow builds, is the way that veins are put on to arrows. And I'm not necessarily talking about fletching jigs, okay? But the actual adhesive that you use on your veins. I'm the type of guy, like if you look at my gear profile, it's buy once, cry once. I'm super busy. I don't like to do things twice, but I always have time to do things once and to do them right. With veins, there are a lot of different options a lot of different jig options uh fletching options and adhesive options what i have in my left hand is ultra strong premium adhesive what i have in my right hand is not so premium (laughs) adhesive you may think like this is a little overboard but when you start shooting and you have veins fly off for no reason there's no contact with the arrow rest things are just zipping through the air bows are fast now a lot of guys shooting high speed stuff and when you have veins zip off or they're loud or any kind of malfunction, like that is one of the most frustrating things for me is to have to go back and refletch an arrow. A lot of people are probably thinking, all right, well, that takes five seconds, literally. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, but just the frustration of having to go back and do something twice, it irks me. Don't mean to interject here, but a lot of times you have one arrow that flies good out of your 12 arrows. You got one arrow, you number it, you're like this is my Absolutely. arrow. If you're out in the field and that one flies off, you can't just go back to your truck and refletch your arrow. So to have that fly off in the moment of truth at that moment, or if you shoot it at a deer and it flies off, going home and refletching it, that does you no good because you just missed your opportunity. Yeah. To your point, a lot of it goes back to confidence. So what I have, a couple of different arrows. Now, there are different veins, different fletchings on these, but re- disregard that. They are put on, fletched with these two different types of adhesive. So I guess you guys are going to take my word for that because we're not going to show you. <laughs> um, but Zach here is a – you're a big dude, right? Um, now – I want you to first take this arrow. This is an arrow Cam shot last year and try to pull one of those veins off. Fairly easy. Fairly. Try to pull one of those off. And I want you to torque on that thing as hard as you can. (laughs) Hard, man. It's not coming off. Give them the channel locks. All right. Take a pair of channel locks to it. Like, don't be it almost hurts them. my heart to rip these off. No, rip them, dude. I, I want you to try to rip them off. And you're going to damage the vein, but I want you to try to rip the fletching off. Come on, dude. <laughs> I mean, you guys can see, I mean, to his point, I mean, I completely agree with him on this. My thing on here, confidence. It comes back to confidence. I can't make a shot if I'm not confident. And everyone will tell you, archery is 90% confidence, 90% mental. Um <laughs> I'll tell you, I've never seen this particular glue he's talking about, but I can assure you, when I when I leave here today, I'm probably going to order a bottle. <laughs> so, not necessarily uh, gear or gadget, but I'm showing you both. Gadget. Gear. There you go. Yeah, I'm in. All right, Zach, what'd you bring? All right, so to you know elaborate on his point as far as confidence one of the biggest things that when i go to the woods i want on my bow that i will not move on i see a lot of guys talk about them Uh, i see a lot of people who will buy them that don't really know what they're for they just go for looks but that's a front and a rear bar i normally run wick stick wick stick is built in wakeman ohio dan hardwick is the guy that makes these he's a good guy great company he sells direct to consumer Um, You can get these in any variation of diameter, length, all the weights adjustable. But like I said, as far as confidence goes, before I started shooting a front and rear bar, you know, I was pretty confident. I felt as though I was a fairly decent shot with a bow out to 
30, 40, 50 yards. I switched over to shooting a front and a rear bar after I started shooting, you know, indoor and shooting outdoor. It made a huge difference. You know, when, when I draw back in that moment and I lock in, there's no fight in my bow left or right. When I draw back and I anchor, that bow comes to the same spot and it's level every single time. This is kind of a two part thing too. These I will never leave the house to go hunt without. The other thing, and it kills Luke because he's not a big fan of them, but it's the nose buttons. I am an absolute believer in the nose button. So we have one spot in West Virginia in particular that comes to mind in this, this kind of situation that makes me think of this, that Luke actually helped me set up. And from the tree stand to, you know, I guess it's kind of like an old logging road, it's 20 yards but it's 60 feet in elevation change from the bottom of the stand to the logging road. So, I mean, we're talking 80 feet almost. So when those deer come up and across that logging road, I mean, I'm shooting almost straight down. Yeah. So when I draw back, I know my bow is gonna be level left to right because I have my bar set correctly. When I, I know that when that hits the same spot on my nose every single time, that arrow is going where I want it to go. Yeah. As long as I do my part, that arrow is going where it's gonna go. And again, like, like Chad said, I mean, it all comes back to confidence, whether it be 20 yards or whether you're shooting just for fun out to 100, 120 yards. Being confident in your build and having the equipment to do so. I mean, I tell everybody all the time, it's not a matter of I can do it or I can't do it. You absolutely can do it. Someone just hasn't showed you how to do it. You don't need the best of the best. You don't need to spend thousands of dollars. You need good form. You need, you know, good posture. You need a good anchor point. You need to do the same thing every oh, single right. time. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, it's funny. Uh, I shoot a nose button too. You know, I went from a kisser button to a nose button and I do prefer the nose button over the kisser button because it is more precise. If I have a face mask on, like I'm not worried about like the camera. There's a clip of camera at full draw trying to get his face mask down yeah. to get to where he could, you know, his anchor point or feel confident in his anchor point in the boat kind of jumped on him he still got up killing a deer but it was a funny clip it was a, it was a it wasn't very funny, funny in the moment yeah no, for i sure. can imagine it's heart you know heart dropping out of your stomach but to your point being more precise with your anchor points totally agree 100 percent. and then on the bar thing stabilizer thing i always used to think that stabilizers were for like vibration reduction for noise reduction and then dan bayas you know a guy that uh that's close to our brand is like you need to get your bow set up to where it's level and everything is square left to right, front to back. So when you're shooting, if there's any kind of torque on your bow, you know it's from you and not your equipment to your to your exact point. Absolutely. And to, you know, kind of as far as what you're saying, I think that coming through those that, that late 90s, early 2000s, when we're watching any number of hunting shows, I really think that we were programmed to think that way because there was a lot of companies that built front stabilizers that their big marketing tactic was vibration. vibration reduction. So I think it was one of those things that maybe they had great intentions, but was kind of misunderstood until we started running those back bars. And I mean, it, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, I really think that that we all were kind of programmed to think that way when they first came out. Yeah. I don't shoot a back bar, but I have a sidebar that goes front and back. So that kind of does the same thing to a little bit lesser extent, but it balances my bow perfectly. So yeah, I, I think it's a, a piece of gear to have. Nose button, also I don't shoot, I haven't shot one in the past, but I am going to shoot one this year. It just makes a ton of sense. I mean, it's a third point of impact, I mean, why not have it? Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm on board gear all the way. Yep, gear. Gear. So my piece of equipment today is um, a bow sling. And if you've watched this show before, we've had a bow sling on previously, and I believe I found a better one. Previously, Jake and I have used the Sitka bow sling, and it's a bow sling that could, goes over top of your cams. You do have a little bit of cam protection within that, but if you use it as a sling, those neoprene pads or whatever, they slip off your cams pretty easily. If you find yourself in a position where you're spotting and stalking or you have to make a quick shot, with that neoprene cover over top of your cams, you can't do it. You have to take your bow sling yeah. off, put it on the ground, and execute the shot. A lot of times, not going to happen. With this bow sling, this is by Jacked Gear. Uh, the name is pretty uh, comical. My slingling. And the idea of it is it's a bow sling that you never have to take off of your bow. So it's paracord looped and it connects to the bow. And when you release this, it goes to a magnet. So as you have the bow, it just connects to a magnet. So it's streamlined, out of the way, execute the shot. There's also a, a bunch of other ways to use it. It comes with a wrist sling option. I don't shoot a wrist sling, but the wrist sling has that leather pad on it. That's what the magnet is connected to. And I might just run a piece of paracord through that leather and have that as my wrist sling. So that can connect here 
instead of down here. Mm -hmm. That magnet is stronger than this one. So that might be what I do with that there. But yeah, here it is here. You have that big old magnet compared to just a screw yep. for it to connect to. Yep. So it's a veteran owned company made in the USA. So that, that's kind of like what made me make the initial jump to it. Like I can definitely get behind that, love that. And I don't know, Chad, you're a big paracord guy. You have 300 foot of paracord here if you ever get in a pinch. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's built in that. You know, like I'm as, trying to be as minimalist as possible, take the least amount of things as possible. This is not an extra thing I have to take. It's connected to the bow at all times. So it's just a part of my bow. You can also use it. Um, we'll get some B-roll of this, but you can use it, put the sling around your neck, put your elbows on the riser of your bow, and it's a stabilizer for your binos quick glassing and it's always on you climbing up your tree it's on your back you don't have to use a bow rope anymore it's this isn't coming off like. that's yeah your bow is not coming off of this it's on these it can't come off with those neoprene pads on the other slings it can slip out i've had it happen climb the tree my bow falls to the ground because it slipped out of the sling so i am always going to use a bow sling i'm a big bow sling guy it just keeps me hands free as i'm walking through the woods this bow sling attached to the bow now, I think it's pretty interesting uh, functionality. Like I could definitely see where it's, I mean, it is pretty damn useful. I, I do think like just the way on that setup, having that magnet a little higher and moving some of the slack towards the top to go around your kind of, uh, I guess it would be your site and take up some of the slack on the bottom, I think makes probably makes more sense even on top of using that bigger magnet. But I'm really interested to see how you shoot with that, like progressed through the summer and, and into the season. Yeah, this isn't even actually connect. I only connected this this way for this video. Matthews, this is something that I just found out. They don't, this bow is the new V3X. They have the capabilities of that silent connect system with their bow rope system. And you put the uh, thing in here and it has like a little peg here. This will loop to that peg a whole lot easier. And it won't be as, it won't be up here. It'll be back here. Got so it. that that's going to be a, a big difference. And um you have to order that <laughs> separately. They don't put it on the bow, which is stupid. I don't understand why you wouldn't. If you have the capabilities of it, why wouldn't you just put it on the bow? You have to buy their bow rope to get the silent connect system. So I'm waiting on that to come in. I had to buy that. I thought I would just use this with that silent connect system. I was wrong. Do you think that'll help with string wear too? Because like I'm always yeah, holding my string. I am rough on my stuff. Like there's no, I'm not going to argue that I'm rough on my equipment. But, like, at the end of the season, it feels like I need new strings every year. I mean, my strings are just torched, frayed. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm think dragging about them through if the mud and the dirt and the stuff I have on my hands. That's, it. that's what I was just going to say. You, your hands are so dirty, greasy, oily, and you grab your string with that. That's all getting down into the string. Yeah. I mean, that's going to help. You know, a lot of you guys, they're, they're having issues with potentially your peep rotation, too. I hear a lot of guys blaming the string manufacturer, and I see, I would say, 90% of them, it's, it's just bad habits. It's not so much a string problem it's just poor habits and i mean i really think that this is going to be a great tool to help with the guys who do carry you know their bow by the string that peep rotation um so when you draw back on a deer and it's the moment of truth you know you're not worrying oh gosh is my peep in the right position another thing on this uh, it looks super sturdy i mean this isn't something i'm going to worry about you know beating up or hurting or anything like that and lastly, kudos to these guys on, on, you know, the marketing. It's super memorable, and it's something that you're going to leave, and you're going to remember the name. I mean, you're, this is a product you're going to be excited to tell your buddies about just because of the marketing. Yeah, their slogan, so it's made by Jacked Gear. Their slogan's Get Jacked. So you're getting jacked with my sling leg. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like it. I'm super excited to use it this year for 3D guys. You never have to put your bow on the, on the ground. You Take your shot, put it around your uh, shoulder, sling it, go pull it out. One quick thing, too, I want to add. So they have these uh, rack packs here. They're called pack rats. And you put this on your shoulder strap of your pack. This is slick. So you put this on the shoulder strap of your pack like this. Then you put the sling over top of that, and you put this around and it holds your sling in place. Oh, nice. So it doesn't slide off your shoulder. Yeah. So if you're long hikes in, like yeah. elk hunting or something, you don't, yep. Yep, you just put that thing around there, and it won't slide off. So you don't have to, like, hold it while you're walking. A lot of, like, when you're walking with a sling on, you're always holding it. Yeah. And you're just... I mean, that in and of itself, I mean, that's gear in my opinion. I mean, 
whether it be your bino harness, whether it be your backpack, yeah. uh, if you're carrying a decoy in that's got a strap on it, I mean, that's what, I mean, honestly, carrying a decoy in and having that thing always slide off my shoulder because I'm carrying a backpack hinders me, you know, well, I wouldn't say hinders me, but, but like, there's a it's lot annoying. of times that, yeah, I'm not going to take a decoy just because I don't have to deal with the frustration yeah. to get into where I'm going. Yeah. I mean, that's a great tool just in itself. Yeah, I like what they got going on. Yeah, I like it too.